do I look like a spy? Now, I ask this because when I was doing my PhD, and a PhD is a three-year piece of research, I wanted to study black education that wasn't in the university, right? wasn't in schools. So I went to what we call the black supplementary school movement, which has existed for about 50 years in the UK. And because of the racism that black children faced in the mainstream schools, the parents, the teachers, the churches, um, organizations set up these different spaces outside the mainstream, Saturday schools, supplementary schools. So I wanted to research those spaces and to see what was done differently and what could we learn. And I went to, I picked out one of the most radical Saturday schools I could find. It has a long history, it's one of the oldest Saturday schools. And I went to this organization, first day I got there, this man comes up to me, he's got his finger in my chest and he's saying, you're a spy. You're a spy for the white man, why are you here, right? And I'm like, I'm, I'm young at the time, I'm like, wow, that, that's, that's, that's deep, that's a misunderstanding, like, I'm, I'm trying to do good stuff, right? But that, I swear, that has been really important as my career has gone on and thinking about black studies and what we're trying to do. Because it wasn't a misunderstanding. He was mad and he was suspicious for good reason. The university is historically one of the most racially, racist institutions that we have. It was university knowledge that proved that I was not actually a person that justified the slave trade, racial science, eugenics. The university is as institutionally racist as the police force. Never forget that. So when I'm going around with PhD, doctor this, et cetera, et cetera, in many ways, I may as well be showing a badge that says West Midlands Police and carrying a truncheon. That's how some people view it, and they're not wrong. And things haven't really changed as much as we would like to think, right? So that's what I want to talk to you for a bit now. How can we reconcile this? How can you do uh, radical black studies, that community-engaged work, when I represent, and I currently represent, an institution which is historically rooted in the very racism that my whole entire life's work is trying to combat, right? So going back to the Saturday schools, the supplementary school movement, it was really important there to learn about the importance of black studies, the importance of having a space which is outside the mainstream. Because in the mainstream schools, the kids were complaining about not being taught, but also what they were not being taught. Uh, Mel Chavan is an academic uh, in this, from Wolverhampton, says that it's not possible to supplement what does not exist. And literally, you go to the curriculum now, you go to university curriculum now, you ain't going to find no black studies on there. You ain't going to find yourself in there. I mean, we have literally been erased to the point that we no longer exist, right? That's why you have these student movements, why is my curriculum white, roads must fall, because we're just not there. And the impact of that on young people, on learning, on how you, and how you go through that whole process of your life, never actually seeing yourself reflected in the curriculum cannot be underestimated. We've been erased literally biologically, culturally, socially, generally, just totally gone, right? So having this space of black studies, and black studies briefly is the perspectives, experiences, and contributions of the African diaspora is vitally important to put that back, to change the way that we think about the world, to change the way that young people also think about themselves. And so, also importantly, black studies, we have the first black studies degree, and it was, it was nice to hear that, to hear that um, put out there, but black studies has existed in the UK for decades. It's existed outside the university. And what we're trying to do is to pay homage to that stuff outside the university, but to bring it inside the institution, right? To say that are there ways we can learn and connect to that history and that politics to really change what we do, to change the relationship of the university to the community. So that people, when next time someone goes into a community organization and wants to do some research, they're not accused of being a spy, right? So that we have those, those relationships. One of the ways I always think about this with people is, how, think, just think to yourself, how many times have you been into a university where either you weren't a student, so you weren't paying to be there, or you weren't being advertised at university? So like an open day. I ask people this all the time, and most of the time, never. The answer is never. Even today, even though you go uni, you're going to pay your fees, the universities are publicly funded institutions. They are taxpayer funded institutions. They are your institutions. So why is it that nobody ever goes into them unless they're paying to be there or advertised so they can pay to be there in the future, right? Or work there. So this is one of the things we've tried to do straight away, is say, well, let's break down this artificial barrier between me as an academic, PhD, et cetera, and me as a person in the community. Let's bring people in for the first time to the university space. 
And we've been really successful about with this over the last two years. We have events uh, about the Black Panthers, Black Education for Liberation, Black Feminism. We've brought hundreds of people locally, nationally, internationally into the space. And that's really important. I recommend you come into the space, to see the space, do the space, do different stuff, right? We've also said it's important that we, we use the resources of the university. Again, publicly funded institutions, taxpayer funded institutions. So let's put the resources of the university to work for the community. And as projects, we work with uh, local organizations like the Harambe Organization for Black Unity. Um, when students come on to do the degree, they have to go and do a placement. Because what we're saying to you is you have to go and work in the community. Black studies isn't just about learn about black people. It isn't just about come and do a uni degree the same way you do other, another degree. It's about saying, how do we put you to work in the community? How do we do this? How do we challenge the things that have gone forward, et cetera, et cetera. So we've really tried to say, let's link this and let's build a radical community of practice that spreads across not just the uni, but the community organizations, the, the institutions, other places, et cetera, right? Now, this has gone pretty well. It's been sort of successful. Uh, we're very proud of what we've achieved as well. And we also have to rec uh, recognize the platform that the institution gives us, right? As much as I will say, and I have said and got in trouble for saying, that universities are like slave plantations. In many ways, this is true. Every institution we have is like a plantation. It's rooted in racism, historically problematic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 right? But the university offers us a space to do things a little bit differently. What other job could I write a book about black radicalism? Or could I go around and spend hours and hours and hours of my week in a community organization? Or could I just be here randomly on a day doing this kind of work? There's no other job that gives me that kind of freedom to do it. So that means that I have a responsibility then to do that kind of work, right? But as long as I recognize the, the position that I have, the platform that I have, I also have to be critical of that platform as well. Because two years ago, nobody wanted to know what I was talking about. I was saying basically the same things I say there, and nobody cared, right? What changed? What changed was I got promoted. I got a bit more profile. The institution started to say, oh, yeah, yeah, let's put him on TV and do this stuff, right? And now people want to listen, right? That's good, and I can do some interesting stuff. But the fact that that's the way that we listen to people today should tell us, that, should tell us the whole problem <laughs> with the way that we approach knowledge, right? We sanctify the people from the institutions. We give them the voice. But actually, if you look at the people we want to be listening to, it's probably more you than it is me. Right? It's more people outside the institution than inside the institution. The person who is my theoretical, political inspiration is Malcolm X. Malcolm X will tell you more about racism than any hundred books written by academics about racism. Because he got it. He was fighting it. He was in the struggle against it. And he articulates this uh, idea about racism better than anybody else, right? Nowadays, you wouldn't even think about Malcolm because he ain't got a PhD. Malcolm didn't finish school, right? So we have to really challenge this and say, well, actually, let's try and find those voices that we don't like to put on a pedestal. Let's try and find those voices outside the institution. Because the uncomfortable truth is, and I'll say this honestly, you cannot trust academics to do that radical work. You cannot trust me to do that radical work. Why? Because institutions change people. People do not change institutions. I tell you right now, I've been in university for a long time. And the, the what you have to do, the structures of it, how it works, how you get promoted, it's so internal. It's so much a bubble. It's so much separated from everything you would ever think was useful. Right? And you have to do that work. So if you leave it to me and you leave it to us, We've done this, who have, who have this audience, who spend all this time, who get paid quite a good, quite get paid a good salary, who are very comfortable, who are very pampered. If you leave it to us to do radical work, absolutely guarantee you there ain't going to be no radical work produced. I've got to be honest about that. That's, that's my, me saying 100%. So what we have to do then is we have to build these radical community of practices. When black studies started in the 60s in America, what made it different was that they said we're going to have the science of liberation. This is going to be for community change. The point of this is how do we make things better? And do you know why that was? It's because they had the Black Panther Party, even the civil rights movement, um, black women's groups, were all pushing for black studies. We're all saying we have to have this and change this. And the academics didn't have a choice because we owed, they owed their jobs, their livelihoods, everything to those movements. So the way that you have the radical politics in the institution is to make sure you have those connections outside. 
And this is my challenge to you. We put black studies in the institution, but we need those radical movements outside to hold our feet to the fire and keep us to account. Thank you.